Hi, I'm Maisie Ray and this is Coast Community News 5 at 5, May 21st. Coming up this week, IPRA approves rate rise. The coast is on track to get a new private hospital. Students call out the government and march for climate change. The new federal budget promises to upskill coasties and a film on sexual liberation. But first, let's go to Jacinda, who's going to give us an analysis on the latest council updates. Yes, thanks Maisie. Big news this week, the Independent Pricing and Regulatory Tribunal, aka IPART, has officially approved the 15% rate rise starting on the 1st of July. This means those in the former Gosford Council area will not only be hit with just the 15% rate rise, but also with the harmonisation increase, seeing some people pay over 40% more due to this process. Currently, ratepayers in Gosford pay less on average than Wyong, meaning rates in the northern regions will actually reduce as part of this, ha as part of this harmonisation. IPART Tribunal member Deborah Cope spoke with us this week about the decision. Um, our decision is to approve an increase for three years, but then it must be removed from the rate base so that it would go back to um, the, the level that it is now after adjusting for inflation. And given that there is now an inquiry um, into the council, what the three years does is it makes sure that the council has the money that's needed in the interim so that um, the services to the community aren't put at risk but that there is a real pressure to make sure that the changes are made. Now, this 15% special variation has been approved for only three years, something that the newly appointed administrator, Rick Hart, is extremely disappointed about. He told CCN that the, quote, restriction on the period of the rate rise could see a further application for a continuation of a rate increase, more asset sales and a further reduction to services. Community consultation on asset sales is still available and you can go to the council's online calculator to see what your rates will look like from July. And sticking with the council, an important finding by Central Coast Council Watch, aka Marilyn Bale, has revealed that almost all of the Central Coast Council's debt appears to be confined to the Central Coast Water Supply Authority rather than within the council proper. Central Coast is one of the few New South Wales councils to which actually runs its own water supply business, which is quite unusual. So go to our website or this week's paper to read the full story. Now let's go back to Maisie, who has some results about CCN's paid parking survey. Yes, thanks JC. One way the council plans to help pay back the debt is to install parking meters at beaches and popular tourist spots. So over a two week period, we asked our readers to participate in a three question survey regarding whether or not they agree with the plan. 65.5% of respondents agree with the installation of parking meters if ratepayers don't have to pay. Visit our website for more information on this plan and thank you to everyone who took the trouble to vote. And the Minister for Employment and Small Business, Stuart Robert, visited the Daily Doe in Terrigal this week to announce new measures in the federal budget to help small businesses and upskilling apprentices. The budget's got about $4 billion in terms of skilling Australians and how we get uh, as many Australians into work as possible. There's a lot of jobs here in the Central Coast, but it's a how about we motivate and encourage and skill and train young Australians into those jobs uh, and that's where $4 billion in uh, apprenticeships, in job trainer and other incentives is really going to turn the dial for the Central Coast. The first stage of the development application to build the Northside Private Hospital in Gosford has been approved with construction planned to start mid-2022. The first $172 million development will be put towards building the multi-storey hospital itself, including 238 beds plus a car park with nearly 300 car spaces. The hospital will be located on Racecourse Road. On Tuesday, we spoke with the representative from AA Crown Holdings, Marcelo Ramirez, who is a joint owner of the project with the Northside Group. We've got a two-stage approach. Stage one is actually the hospital itself, uh, 238 beds plus the car parking of nearly uh, over 300 car spaces. But 
we've obviously allowed for growth as well. So we're talking about pro possibly between another five to th 6,000 square metres, which will be built on Racecourse Road as well. So, and that's looking to the future because we see future growth in this area as well. We see this as a partnership, obviously uh, with uh, Gosford Public only, what, 600 metres from us, uh, we'll cer certainly be having a strong relationship, not only with the public hospital as well, but with the university as well, which has uh, just come into town as well. And today, over 50 school students from across the Central Coast pushed through the rain in Gosford to rally together in the annual School Strike for Climate, pushing for more government action on climate change. We spoke with student Jaden Delgridge, who emceed the event. It's time to tell the government to stop moving, is to stop using coal and gas and other fossil fuels, start moving into renewable energy. You know, we've seen the budget come out this Tuesday, spending millions and millions of dollars that could be really well spent into creating new jobs, especially after this pandemic, creating new jobs in renewable energy right here on the Central Coast. Today isn't the end of it. We're going to keep going until the Morrison government finally changes their actions. And now over to sport with Hawk. Thanks, Macy. A quick look at the Mariners who were successful in last Saturday's F3 derby match against the Newcastle Jets by a single penalty goal. Scorer Matt Simon drove the ball low and hard into the net to take his season goal tally into double digits with 10. Now, the Central Coast side will face their biggest challenge of the season in tomorrow evening's first versus second playoff against Melbourne City at Amy Park. For captain Oliver Bazanic, this will be his 150th A-League game. Big game for us, obviously. Um, you know, we're into our 23rd match and, and to think we're in a 1v2 battle is, is very exciting for the team and, and I know the boys are pumped for it. Yeah, it's great to play 150 games, especially at the club that I started with in the A-League. Uh, it's, uh, it's important to me and my family and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to the game. Being part of the leadership group with Simo and, and with uh, Bires as well, uh, we've, we've tried to help and guide these young players and they're doing fantastic and we just want to help uh, that growth continue. Also tomorrow, as well as Sunday, will be the inaugural Central Coast Air Show featuring aerobatics from multiple aircrafts, including the first handling display in Australia of the F-38A Lightning Mark II. As well as this, there will be a car and motorbike displays and stunts, markets, stores and rides for kids. Children under six will receive free entry. Those who are attending are advised to plan their travel in advance, as there will be limited car spaces available. Please refer to the Getting There tab on the event website for more information. Now to Harry for the weather. Thanks Hawk. The weekend is shaping up to be a wet and gloomy one, perfect for a movie marathon, but if you are going out, you better pack an umbrella. Starting off in Gosford, Saturday will have a high of 20 and a low of 10. It will be partly cloudy with a 30% chance of showers in the afternoon and evening. There will be a cool southwesterly breeze from 15 to 20 k's, becoming lighter before dawn. Sunday will be a little wetter with a shower or two predicted throughout the day. The high will be 20 with a low of 10 and there will be light winds. Moving to the entrance where it is more of the same, on Saturday it will be partly cloudy with a 30% chance of rain. The high will be 19 with a low of 15 and there will be a southwesterly breeze from 15 to 20 k's tapering off before dawn. On Sunday the max will be 19 and the min will be 14. There is a medium chance of showers and there will be light winds throughout the day. The weather looks like it will continue into the week ahead with average temperatures sitting in the high teens and low 20s. Back to you, Maisie. Thanks, Harry. All of these stories and thousands more can be found on our website or in this week's Coast Community News, Coast Community Chronicle and the Pelican Post. Subscribe to all of our socials and Spotify for updates during the week. And finishing off this week, we spoke with Amelia Foxton, the director of the short film Salad Days, which is about lifestyle choices, sexual liberation, and all the sticky challenges in between. We hope you enjoyed this week's show and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. It was one of those things. I, I've been wanting to um, do something to advocate for LGBTQ and unconventional sexual identities and sexual lifestyles for a time. And I thought, um, in my experience, some of the most successful ways of shifting thought and um, and uh, issues in society is with humor. I've, I've noticed that with memes and with gifts and this kind of thing, you can actually do quite a lot to shift uh, society. And mangoes are my favorite, so I think I'll stick with these. I actually eat apples too. Oh, I, I see. Well, it's uh, just apples for me, that's for sure. 
Hey, I'm really happy that you found the fruit that suits you. Thanks. <laughs> oh, come on. Hey? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> yes. Mm? Sorry. Uh, uh, yeah. Could I try some? By all means. Um, mm -hmm. Could you just? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> 